Hey everyone, I'm Marcos and I'm Moxie Boosted, and I made a promise to myself that I would not cover any rumors or leaks until the data mine was complete, so we knew that everything that we saw was completely true. So, now that the data mine's done, uh, I want to give a shout out to Kaz, or not Kaz of War, to Kafotix for taking care of it. Also Kaz of War, he's a data miner that uh, has been known to be pretty good with this sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, shout out to Kafotix, and I can actually start covering some stuff. But when it comes to these data mines, um, I'm actually going to separate them into different topics. Now the first topic is going to be the new moves in the game, and then I think my next video is going to be the new Pokemon in the game or the new abilities. But I'm also, but all these videos, I'm going to be giving, I guess, sort of a, a VGC perspective on things, or just general competitive, depending on like if the move. Uh, was important to singles or doubles or if I think it has a place in both but yeah let's go ahead and get into this before we talk about the new moves in the game I want to talk about the moves that were actually removed that's right so some moves were actually removed from the game and they were mostly just really useless moves that you never really saw except for every once in a while in uh, a trainer battle or in the wild uh, mostly throwaway stuff like bubble or barrage but there are actually some important moves that are gone. Foresight was pretty cool for singles. You could actually use like Foresight hit on top to rapid spin on ghost types. Um, return and frustration, those are huge. That's a big nerf to normal types in general, as well as Snorlax specifically, uh, because Snorlax actually, one of its best stab moves was return. It's able to use stuff like body slam instead, but um, I feel like in this format, it's gonna be running either body slam or frustration in wake of frustration frustration body slam or facade in wake of frustration and return being gone um i think one of the bigger ones that's being underplayed is pursuit being gone now pursuit was really really annoying to some psychic types you weren't able to switch out on dark types that had pursuit because it would just it would just up the damage that you were taking and pretty much guarantee a KO if you tried to switch out. Uh, this is a big nerf to things like Honchkrow, which are not in the game, but um, Tyranitar. Choice Band Tyranitar no longer going to be able to run Pursuit, uh, no longer going to be trapping Psychic types, so that's pretty huge. Um, and finally, Hidden Power. Hidden Power is no longer in the game, and this is pretty big because Pokemon... Uh, I, I guess something that would run Hidden Power uh, would be like Mega Manectric. So Mega Manectric... Every once in a while, you would see it run Hidden Power Ice to help deal with things. Well, I know Mega Manector is in the game, but Special Attackers. We'll, we'll use Mega Manector because it was here. Uh, Special Attackers would run Hidden Power Ice to help deal with Flying Dragon types or just things that were weak to that. Um, specifically, Garchomp and Salamence and Flygon. All those things drop to Hidden Power Ice if it's a strong enough Special Attacker. So, this is sort of a nerf to everything all around um, because they no longer have that like just back of their pocket coverage uh stuff that the opponent might not expect so yeah and grass types you know like to run hidden power fire uh things that can trap uh other steel types like or i guess like i know things with magnet pole would like to uh trap celesteela uh or scissor and they would technically they would usually have hidden power fire uh so that way they could two shot them uh so yeah like that's honestly pretty huge there's no longer that strange coverage that any pokemon can have um we're, now, we're no longer going to see things like hidden power water tornadoes or something um but yeah that's 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 just strange uh with that out of the way let's go ahead and get into some new moves now all of the new moves where'd you go i completely forgot to open up that <laughs> where are you Here it is move descriptions so all the new moves are towards the bottom and there are some pretty cool ones in here actually let's go ahead and go past all these as you can see um, if you import a Pokemon from a previous generation uh, that had moves that are no longer usable like uh, I guess batty bad or freezy frost this move cannot be used uh, it's recommended that this move is forgotten once forgotten this move can't be remembered so yeah that's that's kind of weird um, I know that like None of these moves are in Pokemon's uh, learn sets for this game. So if you bring like a Pursuit Tyranitar in from Oras, or not Oras, from uh, Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon, then it'll just have that as the description. It's like, hey, this is useless, don't bother. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. But let's go ahead and skip over, well, I, I guess we'll go over the Dynamax moves real quick, uh, especially since they're in the middle of everything. So 
Uh, we have Max Guard. This move enables the user to protect itself from all attacks. Its chance of failing rises if it's used in succession. So basically, it's just Max Protect. You like, you know, Dynamax moves can go through regular Protect, I guess, uh, or you know, like just maybe. Maybe Dynamax moves don't go through regular Protect, maybe those Dynamax moves, their secondary effects can go through Protect, so like even if you Protect, you might get paralyzed or put to sleep. Um, but Max Guard is going to prevent any of that from happening, so that's pretty cool. Dynamax Cannon. User unleashes a strong beam from its core. This move deals twice the damage if the target is Dynamaxed. And if you guys don't want to be spoiled, I guess stop watching. I already put spoiler in the thumbnail, so you know get out of here <laughs> but this move is eternatus is it's eternatus the third box legendary's signature move uh eternatus has insane base stats we'll get into that in the next video but it's pretty interesting the smeargle isn't in the game so it's not like anything else can use it snipe shot this is the signature move of the intellion line it ignores the effects of opposing pokemon's moves and abilities that draw in moves allowing this move to hit the chosen target now if i remember correctly this is an 80 base power move and that is pretty cool because we know Gastrodon's in the game. That means that this Pokemon, Inteleon, is able to uh, put out like water type damage without it getting drawn in by Gastrodon or Follow Me users or Rage Powder users. So that's honestly really cool tech. I feel like Scald is going to be a little more useful than it, but we might see Snipeshot on a few teams. Jaw Lock. This move prevents the user and the target from switching out until either of them faints. The effect goes away if either of the Pokemon leaves the field. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I'm uh, I'm pretty sure this is the signature move of the where are you? Signature move of that new Pokemon Dreadna. Let's go ahead and go to Dreadna. There you are. So if we go down here, Jaw Lock. Yep, that's pretty cool. Uh, so it's sort of like Wrap, but the Wrap user can't leave. I, I'm thinking it's going to be a pretty strong move. Um, of course, it's going to be boosted by. Uh, the strong jaw ability that Dreadnought has. Uh, Stuffed Cheeks. The user eats its held berry and sharply raises its defense stat. Stuffed Cheeks isn't on too many Pokemon's move uh, learn sets. Or actually, hold on, let me. There is another thing I could bring up that actually is really useful for this. Moves learned by. So if we go here, Stuff Cheeks. It's learned by Squovit and Greedent. Those Pokemon are new. Uh, they're basically just the rodents for this generation. I don't really see them being all that powerful. Uh, next move is No Retreat. This this is my favorite move of the entire generation, and it's one of my favorite Pokemon I've seen so far. Stuff or er, No Retreat. This move raises all of the user's stats, but prevents the user from switching out or fleeing. This is the signature move of Phalanx. Now let me bring up a picture of Phalanx if I can find it. All right, I couldn't find a picture of Phalanx, but uh, it's really cool. Uh, I'm gonna go into it. I'm gonna go into the details of Phalanx in the uh, video where I talk about the new Pokemon. Um, but it is a pure fighting type Pokemon, and it's like a bunch of little Spartan-looking dudes. And they, uh, it's really cool. It's based off of Alexander the Great, or uh, just the Greek Phalanx strategy, which is just so cool. But the move prevents you from switching unless. Uh, the move prevents you from switching at all. You, you're stuck there to your Pokemon faints and it raises all of your stats. And that's just such a cool idea. Um, it'd be cool if other Pokemon can learn it, but um, we can tell from this thing over here where that the only Pokemon that does learn that is Phalanx. That's pretty cool. An exclusive move for a really cool Pokemon. Next move, Tar Shot. The user pours Sticky Tar over the target, lowering the target's speed stat. The target becomes weaker to fire type moves. This is the signature move of the Colossal line. Uh, as you can see, Colossal is the only one that learns it. And uh, I feel like that's going to be not the most useful move. Not really. Um, I don't see it being all that viable in VGC, especially since only one Pokemon learns it. I'll talk about Colossal's viability in VGC in the next video. Um, next up, Magic Powder. The user scatters a cloud of magic powder and changes the target to psychic type. So it's like it's like soak. It's basically psychic type soak. Um, I don't. I can't think of any real uses for this ability. Soak is useful because you're allowed to poison that Pokemon. Uh, I guess maybe if there are any psychic type stall Pokemon, then they now have access to a soak esque move. They can change a steel type into a psychic type and then poison them. Uh, maybe you could change a fire type into a psychic type and burn them with Will O Wisp or something. Uh, but as for Pokemon that learn Magic Powder, uh, we can check right here. If I could type right. 
it is the signature move of the Hatterene line. So really it's just Hatterene. I don't really see this move being all that useful. Dragon darts. Now this is so cool. It's a new concept of VGC entirely, uh, or double battles. The user attacks twice using Dreepy. Now this is the signature line of the pseudo legendary of the game. I believe its name is Dragapult and it shoots little pre-evolutions of it named Dreepy out from its head. Uh, if there are two targets, this move hits each target once. And I remember this being 50 base power, which is really cool because if you hit one person, if there's one person on the other side of the field, then you end up getting a, you know, a 100 base power move off on them. But if there are two people on the other side of the field, then you get 50 base power moves on either of them, which is really interesting. Uh, it, I don't believe it gets blocked by wide guard because it's individual hits. So that's a really interesting and new concept to Pokemon altogether. Next up, we have Tea Time. Now, this is the signature move of the Poltegeist line. I'm pretty sure nothing else learns Tea Time except for Poltegeist. It wouldn't really make sense um, if I could type it right. Yeah, Tea Time is just Poltegeist, um, which is, it's, it's a really interesting move. The user has Tea Time with all the Pokemon in battle. Each Pokemon eats its held berry. So you can sort of use it to get rid of Pokemon uh, like if if pinch berries in the game, you can use this to get rid of their pinch berries really early Like you can use it turn one and they'll eat their berry and it'll go away. That's that's kind of cool um, But because it's every Pokemon in the field You can force a berry on your ally Pokemon to go off You can make it so your Salak berry goes off immediately and there's another Pokemon in the game that has a really cool ability that I think might pair well with Poltegeist. Uh, it's called um, What's his name? Apple Appleaden apple something but it's it's based off of apple pies and it's a dragon and its ability is called ripen and this thing just it, the ability just makes the potency of berries double so you'll hear you'll heal twice the amount of health you'll go twice up in speed set if you have a salak berry it just doubles the effect of berries so that's kind of cool i could see those being cool together maybe a really cheesy strategy next up octolock the user locks it the target and prevents it from fleeing this move also lowers the target's defense and special defense each turn I could see this being pretty cool in singles. Um, we don't. I, I know that the only Pokemon that learns it is probably going to be Grap Locked. But let's see. Maybe maybe something like Tentacruel or yeah. No, it's just it's just Grap Locked. I was thinking maybe um, what's that Pokemon called? The uh, Octillery. I was thinking maybe Octillery would get it, but unfortunately no. Um, I could see it being pretty cool for singles. I don't see it being that viable in doubles. It might be viable in doubles. It all depends on how viable Grap Locked in general is, uh, which again, we'll go over later. But uh, I could see a, I guess a practical use for it would be to trap in a particular Pokemon uh, and protect on one turn, lowering its special defense and defense the next turn. You'd be able to uh, get a one shot on it with your partner Pokemon, or maybe just for stall teams, uh, you could have like the strategy where you grab locked something or you octo lock something and then protect to let its special defense go down to two stages instead of one outspeed it and KO it the next turn so that's a pretty interesting use for that move bolt beak this is learned by two of the fossil pokemon uh the user stabs the target with an electrified beak if the user attacks before the target the power of this move is doubled so that's interesting uh we don't have the base power yet but i can see that being a pretty useful electric type move uh for those two uh, electric type fossil pokemon of course it's probably physical so we don't have that many physical electric type moves and then we have volt tackle wild charge thunder punch and zip sap and i think that's pretty much it nuzzle i don't really consider a powerful move it's more of a support move vicious rend the user runs the target <laughs> the user runs the target with its hard gills if the user attacks before the target the power of the move is doubled so it's like a water type version of bolt beak uh, of course that's for the other two fossil pokemon Court change. With its mysterious power, the user swaps the effects on, on either side of the field. Now, I actually don't know what Pokemon learns this. It looks like this isn't a signature move. It's probably just a support move that many Pokemon can learn. Oh no, Cinderace gets it. Only Cinderace. That is the uh, fire type starter, which means that uh, this move is, that's, that's interesting. This, this is another signature move, which uh, this Pokemon gets two of then. That's pretty cool. Uh, the other one's pretty interesting too. Let's go over the max moves. Max Flare, we already know what most of these do. It's a fire type move. Uh, it intensifies the sun for five turns. So that's pretty cool. It'll just set up sun if you use it. Uh, max Flutter by the bug type Dynamax move lowers the, lowers the special attack stat, sort of like Snarl. Max Lightning, the electric type Dynamax move uh, 
the user turns ground into electric terrain for five turns so it just sets up electric terrain back strike the normal type move lowers the speed stat Max knuckle fighting type move lowers the or raises the ally pokemon's attack stat i could see that being a pretty cool uh combo strategy with some powerful physical attackers or maybe just some fast mediocre attackers they'd be able to start sweeping uh as soon as their partner pokemon goes for that especially since you can use it multiple times that's really interesting max phantasm this is a ghost type attack from uh dynamax pokemon use it lowers the defense stat Max Hailstorm, it's just ice and sets up hail. We can guess for some of these. <laughs> I mean, we were right about that. Uh, Max Ooze, Poison type, it lo uh, raises the ally special attack stats, so uh, sort of like Max Knuckles. Max Geyser, the water type one, it summons the rain for five turns. Max Airstream, uh, raises ally speed stats, so it's not Tailwind, it uh, just raises your speed stat. It'd be cool if it set up Tailwind, but I guess it wouldn't be as strong then. Uh, Max Starfall, the fairy type one, sets up Misty Terrain. Max Wormwind, that's a cool name, Max Wormwind. Uh, it's a dragon type move, it raises, or lowers the target's attack set. Max Mindstorm, the psychic one, it sets up psychic terrain. Max Rockfall, uh, it summons a sandstorm. Max Quake, it's the ground type one. It raises uh, your special defense stats, sort of like how rock types get a special defense boost in the sand. Uh, this will just do that. Uh, max Darkness, it'll lower the special defense stat of your opponents. Max Overgrowth, it'll summon Grassy Terrain, of course. And Max Steel Spike, it'll raise your ally Pokemon's defense stats. And then we have something that is absolutely freaking amazing. I was so concerned for Kamoa. I am a big Kamoa fan. I have a video about Kamoa that I made a while ago. Go check it out. It's from like two years ago when he finally got his E-move. Playing her as Soul Blaze is Kamoa's best move. It is Kamoa's best move. And I was concerned that with Z moves gone, Kamoa would just drop in viability. But Kamoa now has an alternative. Kamoa has Clangorous Soul. So it's losing the blaze. It's not been legalized yet. Uh, the user raises all of its stats by using some of, his, uh, some of his HP. So I'm hoping that this is like Belly Drum. I'm hoping it's not like 25%. I'm hoping it's 50%. So it like cuts your HP in half and then you raise all of your stats by one instead of raising your attack stat by max. I feel like that'd be a balanced way to do it. Maybe if it's just a quarter of your health, that'd be interesting, but uh, I doubt they'd put something that unbalanced in the game. Or who knows? It's only for Kamoa. Uh, Kamoa's the only Pokemon that learns it, as we can see right here. Uh, so maybe, maybe, maybe uh, it'll just be 25% of its health. I'm so excited for that. We can see Clanger Soul, Clanging Scales, Kamoa again. That'd be so cool. Uh, I, that's just, <laughs> I'm so happy that that's in the game. So body press, the user attacks by slamming its body into the target. The higher the user's defense, the more damage it can inflict on the target. I guess this would be cool for stall teams or just bulky teams. Um, it's not the defense stage. So it's it's like, it depends on your defense stat. It doesn't use your attack stat, I guess. It uses your defense. Or maybe it's like heavy slam where the calculation is based on your defense, but it does use your attack or by your weight, but it uses your attack stat. We don't really know exactly how that works. But Pokemon that learn that, um, let's see. Let's see if there's any cool Pokemon that learn it. Body Press. Blastoise could definitely use that, all right. Uh, Rhydon, ooh. Like, Eviolite Rhydon could definitely do some damage with Body Press. I believe it's a normal type move, uh, so maybe not the most. Snorlax, it has a pretty low defense stat, but I know that many Belly Drum Snorlax will run a lot of defense on that. Um, I'm looking for more normal types that can take advantage of this. Um, as for those, I don't see too many. Um, double. Double could be a cool one. I know it has about 100 defense. Uh, that's the Wulu evolution, so it could be a pretty cool body press user. Um, but besides that, really it's just going to be Double and Snorlax that I think will take the most advantage of that. So that's kind of cool. That, that's a pretty cool move. Decorate. This is the signature move of the... I forget the name of them. Uh, the Alchemy line. Raises the target's attack and special attack stats, uh, or sharply raises the target's attack and special attack stats by decorating the target. So it's it's a purely support move, but um, I could see this maybe being a really cool combo with like foul play. You could like go for, I mean, of course you're gonna use it on your partner Pokemon. That's sort of like Swagger, Tapu Fini, how you would raise your partner Pokemon's attack stat. But I could see this being used with foul play as well. Uh, you just raise the opponent's attack stat and then go for the foul play the same turn to guarantee a KO. That's pretty cool. Drum beating is a move I've been pretty interested in ever since I first heard about it. 
Uh, the user plays its drum, controlling the drum's roots to attack the target. This also lowers the target's speed stat. Now, this is the signature move of the rookie line. And I believe the final Pokemon is called Rillaboom. So this could be objectively the best speed lowering move in the game. It depends though. It really depends. If this hits both targets, uh, I know for a fact that it can't miss. So it's 100% accurate. And the only Pokemon immune to it because it's a grass type move are Sap Sipper Pokemon. So because it, it could literally be the best speed control move in the game for all we know. Uh, but we don't know if it hits more than one. Uh, as of right now, I'm assuming it only hits one. It could just be like a grass type, slightly powered up um, bulldoze. But yeah, I'm hoping that it's not. I'm hoping that it that it hits. Uh, or no, bulldoze does it everything. But I'm hoping that this hits everything too. Drum beating would be really cool. Um, but yeah, snap trap. The user snares its target in a snap trap for four to five turns. I actually haven't read up on that one. I haven't read up on that one. Snap trap. Stun. Oh my god, stun fist gets it. Uh, we all. That's the. Uh, that's going to be for the new variant of Stunfisk, of Stunfisk that's in the game. We don't know exactly how viable that it'll be. Um, I'll look into it for the next video, but that's pretty cool. That's kind of cool. Pyro Ball. This is the signature move of the Score Bunny line. I know that it's the only one that gets it. Um, and basically, it's slightly less accurate Flare Blitz, and it doesn't make contact. It's 120 base power, 90 accuracy, and um, it's a fire type move that makes uh, it's physical. So I feel like this is pretty cool um, if Ferrothorn were in the game or maybe if there are some pretty scary Rocky Helmet users or um, it'd be cool for facing things like Eldegoss because Cotton Down only works if you make contact with it. It'll lower your speed if you make contact. Uh, so this is a nice workaround. You don't make contact, but you still do a ton of damage. So Pyro Ball is a really nice, cool move for the Score Bunny line. I can definitely see them running it consistently over Flare Blitz. Um, but besides that, it's it's really just a signature move. It's Flare Blitz, but less accurate and little and no contact, so that's cool. Behemoth Blade. The user becomes a gigantic sword and cuts the target. This move deals twice the damage if the target is Dynamaxed. Can we guess who gets that? Can we guess who gets that? It's 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 Zamazenta. Or no, it's Zacian. I believe Zacian is the um the sword one. And Zamazenta is the shield one. He gets Behemoth uh, Bash. User becomes a giant shield and slams into the target. Power doubled if the user's Dynamaxed. Not really important to competitive, I guess, because they're Ubers and we don't really see them in VGC that often. Next couple of moves. Right here we have Aura Wheel, and that is the signature move of the Orpeko line. Uh, it depends on what stage it is. If you're in Hangry mode, then you're going to do Dark type damage. If you're in... Um, not hangry mode, I guess. You're going to be doing electric type damage. Uh, but it also raises your speed, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, I, I guess it's going to be pretty useful for the Morpeko line if it ends up being a viable Pokemon. I know Morpeko also gets Fake Out, so it could be a nice support move to get it faster so it can throw off Nuzzles or something quicker. Uh, maybe Super Fangs, because I know it has that. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Breaking Swipe. The user swings its tough tail wildly and attacks opposing Pokemon. This also lowers their attack stats. So let's see who gets Breaking Swipe. Breaking Swipe, Charizard, Onix, Rhydon, Mew, Steelix, Tyranitar, Flygon, Milotic, Rhyperior, Axew, Fracture, Haxorus, Hydreigon, Reshiram, Curum, Zekrom, Gila, Scudra, Salazzle, Drampa, Kamo, Necrozma, 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 Inteleon, Dracozolt, uh, Duraludon, Dracloak, and Dragapult. I don't really have much to say about this. I'm hoping that it hits multiple targets. If it's swinging its tail wildly, I'm assuming it'll hit two Pokemon at the same time. So this might just be physical... It might just be physical Snarl in the way that like Snarl lowers both your opponent's special attack stats. This does physical damage and will lower their attack stats. I'm hoping it hits both their Pokemon. We don't know yet. I, I can see that being pretty cool. That's actually really cool tech for Gudra. If Gudra can use Breaking Swipe... Um, effectively in VGC, it could also be a viable support Pokemon. So that's kind of cool. Um, what is next? Branch Poke. User attacks the target by Pokemon with a sharply pointed branch. I don't think anything gets it but Grookey, and I don't think it's going to be viable. Oh, if I can spell branch right. Oh, no. Phantop, Trevenant, Grookey, Thwacky, Rillaboom. Uh, I'm assuming it's going to be a low base power move. If Grookey gets it, it's probably pretty low base power. It's probably just like a physical version of Leafage. Uh, just, you know, 40 base power probably. I don't know. 
I don't see it being meta defining. Overdrive. Now right here we have a JoJo reference. Uh, Overdrive is pretty cool. It was over here too. There it is, Overdrive. The user attacks the opposing Pokemon by twanging a guitar or a bass guitar, causing a huge echo and a strong vibration. Now we don't know the base power of this move, but I'm assuming it's gonna be electric type, judging by the fact that it's Toxic Tree's um, signature move. It's definitely gonna be sound based and boosted by its ability Punk Rock. Uh, Punk Rock is an ability that boosts the power of sound based moves. That's pretty cool. And um, I mean, honestly, sound based electric move, that is something that we definitely need. There are lots of substitute Pokemon that wouldn't appreciate getting hit by an electric type move through that since sound based moves bypass electric or bypass uh, substitutes. So uh, yeah, I think it's kind of cool. I, I really want to use Toxic Tree. I need to see how viable it is, but uh, Overdrive is a really cool move. Apple Acid. The user attacks their target with acidic liquid created from tart apples. This also lowers the target's special defense stat. So if we go and look at who learns that, I'm pretty sure I know who. It's gonna be the Appleton or Appleton Live line, if I could type. Apple Acid. Oh, it's just going to be Appleton. That's pretty cool. Um, it, it could be a pretty cool support move. Uh, I mean, if it lowers their special defense stat, uh, I guess under Trick Room, because Appleton isn't that fast, um, Apple Acid could be pretty viable. Uh, I guess it's, I mean, it's a lot like that one poison type move that does the same thing. But yeah, Grab Apple, the user inflicts damage by dropping an apple from high above. This also lowers the target's defense stat. So it's just a physical version of the move that the uh, other variant of that Pokemon gets. Flapple gets that move. Uh, I guess just as viable. <laughs> I, I can't really say which one's more viable. Uh, they pretty much do the same thing for different stats. Strange Steam. The user attacks the target with by emitting steam may also confuse the target. I believe this is one of the signature moves of the new Weezing line. Strange Steam. Yep. Galarian Weezing's going to get it. I don't see it being that good. I don't know how strong it is, but it, it couldn't be better than Sludge Bomb. If it's a fairy type move, that'd be cool. I'm hoping it's fairy type. That'd be really awesome. I'm not a fan of moves that can cause confusion. I don't see them as being balanced. <laughs> confusion is just annoying, but yeah. Spirit Break. Oh, I skipped Spirit Break. Uh, the user attacks the target with so much force that it could break the target's spirit. This also lowers the target's special attack stat. Now this is the signature move of one of my favorite Pokemon that we haven't seen yet officially, but got leaked. This is the signature move of the, I forgot his name, it's the Impidimp Evolution, Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl, his stats are ridiculous. I want to talk about him in the next video. Grimmsnarl is going to be viable as hell. It is my favorite Pokemon that I've seen besides the Apple one. I don't know what my team's going to be, but I'm going to use so many Pokemon. This is such a cool dex. Um, but this move could be cool as a support option, but I'm pretty sure because it only may lower the special attack, it's not going to be like, it's probably not going to be on every Grim Snarl, but it could be used on some. Uh, yeah. Life Dew, user scatters mis uh, mysterious water around and restores the HP, and restores HP to itself and its ally Pokemon in a battle. This is the first we've seen of that. Um, it's basically just like Heal Pulse, but for both you and your partner Pokemon. So, uh, I mean, it's the signature move of the Hatterini line. They're very obviously support Pokemon. Um, it even gets Psychic Terrain, spoilers, as one of its uh, hidden abilities, so I could see that being one of the most viable Pokemon in the format, especially since it can heal itself and the partner Pokemon. Obstruct. This is the signature move of the new Zigzagoon line. Obstagoon gets it, and it's like King Shield, but for defense. Uh, the user er, This move enables the user to protect itself from all attacks. Its chance of failing rises if used in succession. Direct contact harshly lowers the attacker's defense stat. So yeah, it's just defense King Shield. While surrender, this user pretends to bow its head and then stabs the target with disheveled hair. This attack never misses. So this is basically just faint attack, but stronger, I assume. Um, I know that the uh, Grimstar line gets it. I'm pretty sure that's the only one that gets it too. Let's see. Yeah, uh, just the Grimstar line. Moragrim is the pre-evolution. So nothing really new there. I don't see it being that great. I mean, it's pretty much just faint attack again. Meteor Assault. This user attacks wildly with its thick leak. The user can't move the next turn because the force of this move uh, makes it stagger. That is the new surf etched move. It's exclusive to surf etched and it's a fighting type move. We don't know the base power yet, but I'm pretty sure it's just fighting type. Um, it's just fighting type. What's the name of that move? Uh, Giga Impact. So that's cool. 
The last two moves, Eterna Beam. This Eternatus is most powerful attack. Wonder who gets it. Uh, in its original form, the user can't attack the next turn. And Steel Beam, the user fires a beam of steel that it collected from its entire body. This also damages the user. Uh, I'm a, I actually don't know who gets Steel Beam. I'm pretty sure it's going to be the uh, Duraladon line. Steel Beam. We don't know who gets it. It doesn't have anything listed as getting it. That's pretty interesting. It could be a mythical Pokemon that hasn't been data mined yet, so that's kind of cool. Um, and because they're not in the game, because they're on Switch, a lot of the data miners have been thinking that it's probably going to be distributed as DLC, uh, which I'm assuming it's free. Pokemon never really makes us pay for anything after the game. Uh, so that's a really cool way of avoiding us from knowing what the <laughs> event Pokemon is by making it not on the base game, just having us install it. That's kind of cool. Let me know what you guys think about these moves. Uh, I'm going to get into the individual Pokemon and the abilities for my next couple of videos if my computer decides to cooperate. But yeah, um, I'm going to be going over these. I personally am really excited to be using uh, drum beating on the Grookey line if it is able to hit both targets. And um, I think the next coolest move that I found uh, would have to be decorate or there was one more. There was one more that I couldn't remember. Overdrive. I really want to try using Overdrive. Um, yeah, the only Pokemon that gets it is... Oh, that's the wrong one. The only Pokemon that gets Overdrive is the Toxicity line, and I'm definitely using Toxicity on my teams. So yeah, with that, I'm going to call, guys. Everyone have a nice night, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.